Hello everyone, it's May and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is my second video on this channel. I do have another channel called Hey It's May where I do post-grad vlogs, just like a lifestyle channel basically. Um, but today we're going to be reviewing Tari's album, What Lies Beneath. I've got the album and my notes. I took a lot of notes once again. This took a lot of research and listening to get ready. But here we are. And if you haven't seen my Winter Storm review, I did that one as my first video. I'm just gonna go in order and do all of Tari's albums, Nightwish albums, and do like other symphonic metal stuff in the future. But yeah, this is my favorite album of hers. I said last time that I know a lot of people's favorite album is my Winter Storm, but for me it's this one. I just love how well all the songs fit together and kind of go with the main theme which is the title of the album, so I thought I would give a little bit of background here. This information is just from the Wikipedia page, but basically what Taria has said about the theme of this album is literally it's like beneath the surface of the water, which we see in some songs, and it's also figuratively about taking a second look at things and kind of seeing what lies beneath in people and things that you might not see on first glance. This was her second album. It was released in 2010 and she was much more involved in the writing and production in this one than she was in My Winter Storm and you know has been all the way forward. Um, My Winter Storm was a mixture of songs written for her and some that she collaborated on but in this album she had a hand in writing all the songs and she was also a co-producer of the album. Another thing I wanted to kind of hit on just like as an overall vibe of this album is My Winter Storm definitely had kind of like a soundtrack feel to it. It was very cinematic. Really every other song was a ballad and then we had those kind of interludes that were the lead-ups of some of the songs and to me it just had a very like cinematic soundtrack feel. Well to me this just feels like a rock album more than that. There are still some of those vibes but to me it just feels like a much just like harder rock album in general. I also kind of notice a death <laughs> theme in this album in addition to the main theme. I will go into that a little bit. And also I am going to be going off of the track listing on my CD because that's what I'm used to. I, when I looked at Spotify I was like what the heck is this order of the songs? That's not right. Um, but if you're used to the one on Spotify then it will not be following that. But I'm just going off of this and then I'll do the ones that aren't on my CD as well at the end. This is going to be rather long <laughs> since this is my favorite album. I've listened to it the most and I have a lot to say about it. So buckle in, we're gonna get started. <laughs> so the first song on this album is Anteroom of Death. What, what just an epic start to the album. It starts out really quietly with like these little notes and then the, the verses are very calm and then the chorus gets, gives you that heavy beat, starts everything off. This song actually was not one that I liked when I first listened to it. When I, the first time I listened to it, I was like, what did I just listen to? That was so weird. But it is now such a jam. I have it on my running playlist and I love this song. But it's definitely a very different sound. And like the the chorus and the verses being so different, I think is a, was a little bit off-putting for me at first. But I just love it now. And I love the kind of bridge parts later in the song and how heavy it is. And it's so good. And there's like that choir in it as well. So that's pretty cool. I think that this, this is definitely like touching on the death theme with the lyrics of this. And she used to open her, her concerts with this song when she did her What Lies Beneath tour. I wish, I wish so much that I could have seen this. If you watch the Act 1 DVD, she's like standing behind this like screen kind of thing and she has a mask on. And then like toward the end of the song in one of like the heavy beat parts, it, the, the screen falls down and it's like all dramatic. Oh my God. I just love that. It's just like what a, it's just a great beginning song. And there's kind of that like what lies beneath aspect when it says like throw your mask away and also like her wearing the mask at the concert and then taking it off. So there's that. And track two, we have Until My Last Breath. I love this song. This is one of her very popular songs. It's her second most popular song after I Walk Alone. I believe, at least on Spotify. But in general, I feel like this is, you know, one of her more well-known ones. I believe it was the first song from her solo career that I heard, like when I branched out out of Nightwish and I was like looking for her solo career songs. I think this is the first one that I heard and I was like, ooh, this is fun. Basically, it's just, it's just superior. Like the, the intro with like the, the softer like doo 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 
and then I get into like the heavy guitar riffs and it's perfect. The first video that comes up when you look for the music video is like the same setting as I Feel Immortal which is like really weird and I don't really know like why but there's another music video that actually makes a lot more sense that's like basically like a music video showing like her death like the media reacting and stuff and that's what I thought like actually went with it so that's kind of confusing but anyway she said it was something to do with like Michael Jackson's death but I I truly think the song is about <laughs> her leaving Nightwish which I will talk about in my future video that I I mentioned it in my last video but uh, I'm gonna do a video that's all about Twomas's lyrics about Taria and another one that's all about like her lyrics about Twomas slash Nightwish so I don't want to like go into it now but I'll go into the lyric then and talk about uh, my opinion on that. It's just my opinion. I know people can have like a lot of different interpretations but that's what I think she wrote it about and in general it was just like a very Twomas thing of her to do to like write a song about like what if I died because he did that a lot. And track three is I Feel Immortal. Um, I guess this would be considered a ballad. I guess, like, we'll call it a ballad. It does build a lot, though. It's so beautiful. I love this song. This is kind of the flip side of that death theme that we've been seeing in the last two songs. Funny story, when I drove myself to school for the first time in high school, when I was first learning how to drive, I was so nervous. I was freaked out, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna play my Atari album. It's all, like feel strong and it'll be great. And so I put this album in and that's when I realized that it had such a death theme. I was like driving down the street and it was like Antrim of death and then <laughs> until my last breath and I was like this is trying to tell me that I'm gonna crash the car and die on my way to high school but I didn't. But anyway that's when that became clear to me. So anyway um, I Feel Immortal is yeah so it's kind of like the flip side of of the death theme um, and it's about feeling immortal only in your dreams. Taria or the the narrator of the song whatever is like I would say kind of having like a hard time in their life and so their dreams are the place where they feel fearless like they can do anything. Yeah it's just really pretty. I love it. And track four is In For A Kill. Here we are back again with the death theme. On the Wikipedia page apparently this is about sharks. Um, if you didn't know, Taria is like, at least she used to be really into diving and she really liked sharks and that is like, that comes into play on this album and she said that this song was like inspired by a documentary she watched about sharks where like everyone thinks that sharks are the predator, like they're hunting us but we're actually like more scary to them and we like harm them more than they harm us and you know there's like all this stigma around it with like jaws and stuff but it's actually like mostly made up so anyway that's what it's about and yeah, I think it's a great song. It's heavy and I love the vocals on the part that says in for a kill. Like it goes all high. So cool. Okay, and track five we have Underneath. This is a very, very special song to me. The lyrics truly just, they've, they've gotten me through a lot. I used to listen to this song in high school like after I had a really hard day always and it just, I don't know, this just, this song just makes me just feel better, I guess. And it's a, basically about finding the strength within yourself. Um, so I just kind of wanted to actually get into the lyrics with this one because I feel like I can actually kind of analyze them. So it says, even in my darkest times, overcome with worry, find the comfort in the storm, no reason to be sorry, look inside for a place to hide. So basically it's finding this, this comfort in the storm, the solace within yourself, all around the faithless weight full of expectations. They will never see the beauty in the imperfections. The more I show, the less they know. I love those lines. <laughs> like just the people around you, like the faithless, the people that want you to fail are just waiting for you to fail at whatever you're doing. And they will never understand like, that it's okay to not be perfect or it's okay to try and, and, and fail and like be vulnerable is kind of how I see that and just like they'll never understand the more I show of myself the less they're gonna understand um, and it says out of reach underneath learned to breathe underneath I love that when it says out of reach like no one else can touch it and learn to breathe underneath is like I found my strength in that place like that's where I found myself and like learn to get through things and Oh my god. And then that's kind of the bridge and then the chorus is something inside of me invisible turning the fragile unbreakable. They cannot take away, cannot take away what I believe. You cannot take away, cannot take away what's underneath. Oh my god. It's just such a powerful song. It is so slow and the piano part. Oh I forgot to mention she plays the piano in most of these songs as well. 
and when she did this at concerts it's just so beautiful it was just her and the piano and it's the piano chords are so simple but it just goes so well with the words so the the chorus is basically saying like there's something inside of you that makes you stronger like turning the fragile unbreakable and no one can take it away from you like it's always gonna be there it's just perfect yeah I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about that um just like musically it builds really well so I mean it is really slow throughout that first part and then you get the drums I think between the second verse and the chorus it's yeah one of my favorites moving on to track six little lies this one's pretty good it's catchy and she wrote this one with her guitarist Alex let me pull up the lyrics for this one as well I kind of just did my own analysis of this I don't know if this is like accurate or whatever but this is at least how I interpret it the first verse says take my faith with an open hand and warm embrace my confidant use my words take the good away and leave the worst to sell me out so basically it's about someone using her um, or whoever you know is narrating the song in the first verse I feel like it could be a little bit about Nightwish, like this isn't one that I used to associate with it, but now that I looked at the lyrics a little closer, like take the good away and leave the worst to sell me out, that sounds a little Nightwishy right there. And then the chorus says, little lies, little lies, making up tragedies, nothing is what it seems, who cares what is real. Little lies, little lies, only to entertain. The message is the same for those who believe. So to me that is like touching on how it's easier to believe little lies and to try to dig for the truth as long as these lies fit with our narrative and make make us feel good then who cares what's real because that's it's easier to believe the lies um but then connecting to the theme of the album the truth is always going to be there beneath the surface and eventually it's going to come back <laughs> you can't bury it forever and i feel like actually this is I don't know, I feel like this could just be related to like today's kind of like political climate, I guess, like how everyone's so divided and they just want to believe, you know, whatever their side says basically and not actually have to dig any deeper, which obviously I don't think that's what she had in mind while she was writing it, but I just feel like that's kind of what I think of. But looking at these lyrics, I truly do believe that this could be a little bit about Nightwish as well. <laughs> In track seven, we have Rivers of Lust. This is another ballad. On Wikipedia, she said this is about a man who is very respected and powerful, but it turns out that he's actually a child abuser and how you can know someone, know them for a long time, and never really know their true self. But to me, this definitely seemed like it was from the child's point of view. I actually had only just done this research. I didn't know that. Um, I always just thought it was about like rape, but I didn't actually know that it was child rape which is really dark like it's even darker than I thought. I actually thought that it could be about gang rape because it says violent hands come at midnight hold me down I can't make a sound in their arms. Like why does it say their arms if it's just one person? That's what I that's what made me think that so I don't know. And then the chorus like just the words are so dark like mercy's hiding it let me go hurts to know mercy's watching watching me drowning in rivers of lust. Mercy, that thing that is supposed to help you and take you from the darkest moments is hiding. Not only is it hiding, but it's watching. It's watching you, but it's not gonna do anything about it. And the vocals on this song are just amazing, especially on the chorus. And when it comes back for that third time after the instrumental, especially like her voice just soars in the chorus and it is so beautiful um, and just such a sad song and then track eight we have dark star which i love superior intro like all these songs just like layer and build so well in my opinion like it starts out with the cello da -da 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 -da, and then you get the drums layering in and then you get that guitar if like it makes you wait for it and then it gets so heavy and just amazing i thought the male vocals in this song worked so well like she sings the first verse and chorus and then we have that the male vocals in the second verse as well it's just such like a headbanger like it just makes you want to like dance or headbang or just rock out it's so good and also the growling i think works really well the male vocals kind of like growl or scream like later in the choruses and not gonna get into the lyrics right now because I have my theories about who this song's about, but we'll save that. And track nine is Falling Awake, another favorite of mine. This one starts out really heavy and then it pulls back for the first verse. And to me, this could be the flip side of I Feel Immortal because 
this might, I don't know, again, this is just my interpretation, I don't know, but like in I Feel Immortal, it sounds like someone is having a hard time and using their dreams as kind of an escape and that's kind of the only place where they feel like they can be themselves. And in Falling Awake, it's the lyrics seem to be about realizing that you've been wasting your life in some way. And it says falling awake from the walking sleep. Like you've been awake, like you've been walking around doing things in your life, but it's been a walking sleep. Um, and I also just love like that line, falling awake, because I've never heard it said that way before, because it's always, you know, falling asleep. So it was such an interesting way to like form the words there. So I feel like this could be about just like going through a hardship or going through depression or drug addiction or something where you were technically alive but you weren't really living your life and this also I just feel like connects back to the theme of Die Alive on the previous album so we kind of have some recurring themes in her songs. So let's get into the lyrics for this one. Phantom voices with no words to follow at the mercy of the cold and hollow I withdrew into my sanctuary of silence my defense. So like withdrawing into yourself because everything in life was too much. Um, in this moment, I'm just becoming liberated from my cell of nothing. No sensation, there was only breathing. Overcome oblivion. Falling awake from a walking sleep and all that remains is the dying memory. And now I can dive for these dreams I make like I'm falling awake. So I just picture someone like breaking the glass or something and like realizing that they have so much life to live and starting to follow their dreams when they just have been, you know, walking around in monotony before. And all that remains is a dying memory, so they've just left the shards of whatever it was behind them. This may or may not have been intentional, but just the word, now I can dive for these dreams I make, is just like a little reference to like the water naiad stuff that we're gonna get into later, and like the sharks. It's just like a little reference, I feel like. And it's like, now I'm gonna follow my dreams. And then the second verse is waves of melodies once forgotten, like a symphony across the ocean, never knew that they could hear my calling. So the waves of melodies once forgotten could be like the dreams that this person had abandoned and never knew that they could hear my calling. Like now my creativity is coming back to me. I'm going to follow my dreams deep within, crashing in, rushing in, like falling, like all these ideas, all these things that you would abandon coming back to you. That's just how I see it, and yeah, great song. Number 10, The Archive of Lost Dreams. Interesting placement right after Falling Awake, I think, and this is actually the placement of these songs both on Spotify and on my CD. This is essentially, I think, talking about like, what will happen if you don't follow your dreams and fall awake. Like, this song is about this place where all of these lost dreams that were never followed go. And it relates to Nyad, which comes first on Spotify, but actually comes after on... Actually, it wasn't even on my CD. <laughs> Just kidding. So it wasn't even there. But this, this song comes after Nyad on Spotify. But it mentions the Nyad again, which is an underwater creature. Um, and the Nyad is the keeper of all of these dreams. It's not my favorite ballad, um, you know, just musically. I like the lyrics, but um, to me, the song was just a bit boring until you get to the bridge, but it is pretty. Track 11 is Crimson Deep. This one is heavier and it's not one that I really listened to a lot before because I think I'd usually just kind of, whenever I would listen to this album in the car or whatever, I'd usually stop it after falling awake, I think. But yeah, it's good. I really like the tune of it actually and the guitar riffs and everything are, are interesting and kind of different than the ones, the heavier songs before it. The lyrics are a little bit cryptic. I wasn't able to make much of them, but I was looking at like the song meanings comments and someone said that um, they interpret it to be like Crimson Deep was blood, like the blood that lies beneath in our veins and then also meaning like trying to find yourself or trying to find your essence basically. So it's like what lies beneath literally and figuratively. And it also does mention blood in the song. It says blood on my lips, I taste the heavy lead. So it sounds very desperate in the chorus, I guess. It says, come to me, I cried, I need you, I'm seeking. The gates unfold inside my lost soul in the dark. So it's like being lost and trying to find something. And it says, far beneath my breath, I'm burning at my core. Show me how, let me see beyond, I will find my crimson deep. So I, I kind of see how that could just be your finding yourself, finding your essence there. Yeah, let me know what you guys think of that. Of any of these, I I feel like, even though I was an English major, I seriously have issues like analyzing lyrics. I'm like, I don't know what that means. 
<laughs> and Target has literally said like she doesn't like talking about what her lyrics mean a lot because she wants people to find their own meanings from them. But I always like trying to figure out what the artist was like going through when they wrote it because I especially like when people write their own music like with you know Taylor Swift and stuff it like I feel like I feel more connected to the songs if I know what they were going through as well even if I have my own interpretation too. Okay so that's the end of my CD so now I'm just going to go into all the songs that are not on my CD slash bonus tracks. So um, we have Nyad and this is the song um, from which the the name of the album comes What Lies Beneath. This is about this mythical water creature, the Nyad, who is the keeper of the lost dreams and archive of lost dreams. And the line in the Forgotten Sweet Abyss made me think of the archive of lost dreams, like maybe that was referencing that. The song is literally what lies beneath the surface of the ocean, talking about the Nyad. I'm not sure what to make of a lot of the lyrics. Um, in one of the verses, or I guess it's kind of the bridge at the end, you can't even, can't even categorize some of Tari's songs into like verses, chorus, bridge, because there's like, they just don't follow that pattern sometimes. There's just a bunch of stuff at the end. So like, I don't know what to call it. But anyway, there's a line that says circle of 16 turned to stone, which connects to the archive of lost dreams when at one point in that song, it says mysterious Nyad, now the circle's closed forever. Nyad, the archive is gone. We're on our own. I don't know. I feel like there's so much more to be songs. I'm just not getting. But yeah, and then I can't think of exactly where I heard this. I want to say I've, I've watched like the making of What Lies Beneath documentary because I just love this album so much. I was like fangirling over it because I like wanted to see how it all came together and stuff. But I, I feel like in, that's where I heard it, her say that the part where the music all kind of goes to like a low note and there's like different kind of sounds, it kind of sounds like you're underwater is when the naiad dies essentially and then it, it picks back up. So make what you will of that. And then next we have We Are. This used to be kind of my skip on this album when I listened to it online. It has grown on me, it's just not one of my favorites. This is uh, another heavier, upbeat one. I actually do kind of like the tune of it, except the bridge, because it something about like the guitar just sounded like dissonant to me on this song, but it just didn't work for me. Like, cause like, not that that's a bad thing, it just, to me, like, it just didn't work. For the song but anyway and then we have still of the night which was her cover on this album it's a white snake cover just like with poison i feel like she did a really good job with it and like she kind of changed her her voice to give it some more rougher edges and work really well with the song personally i just like poison better as a song nothing to do with the way she sang it but i'd rather listen to that one than this one but it's still good and then we have a couple of bonus tracks that i'll just go through pretty quickly i only recently listened to these i didn't even know they existed but i thought that i should give them a mention because they're technically on the album we have montañas de silencio um which is in spanish it starts out with a lot of instrumental then there's just some vocalization and then it goes into some spanish lyrics um i looked up the translation Oh, and this is a ballad, by the way. It's very slow and peaceful, and it's about being alone with nothing but the wind and just basically having time to think. And I don't know, it might be a little bit early for this, but to me, I thought of it because like she said, she really likes running in the mountains in Spain, which at this time she lived in Argentina, so I don't know if it relates to it or not, but she said she likes running um, like in nature in the mountains where there's like no one around just in silence so that's what I thought of there. Then we have If You Believe which is another ballady one. Not one of my favorites which to be fair I just listened to these songs so obviously I haven't had the same time with them that I have the other ones but worth a listen um, but it's just yeah not one of my favorites and then The Crying Moon is another heavy one that to me is a very anteroom of death vibe Again, like the the vocals in the background really remind me of that. And she said on Wikipedia that this is about the moon seeing these two lovers that can never be together. I like it, I don't love it, but that is all. This, like I said, is my favorite album and it's definitely like the first nine songs on my album are just what I listen to over and over and over again. So those are the ones I know the best and like the best, but the other ones are good too, but just those first core nine songs are just, in my opinion, like the best of Taria. But this has really made me like 
give some more deep thought. Like this has made me appreciate this album even more. Like I said last time with my winter storm, like actually listening to it all the way through, it made me appreciate it more and like trying to analyze some of the lyrics and stuff and doing research on it. So I didn't even think it was possible to like this album anymore, but now I do. So <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've listened to Colors in the Dark. So we're gonna, except for the ones again that I like, I just have the ones that I like and then I listen to those. But I've, when I looked at the track list, I was like, I truly don't even know how most of these go. So we're gonna, do that for next time and yeah <laughs> please let me know your guys's thoughts on this album what you liked what you didn't like your interpretations of the lyrics and yeah thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please subscribe and i will see you in my next video bye